very brief something to think about I try my best to bring this message once or twice a year there's a reason behind it I've been in the ministry now for 42 years I believe the Bible said that we are an epistle known and read of all men Amen. I believe today it's time we have to, it's a time that we're living in that we have to let folks know where we're at Amen. we're living in a time now it's a sad time in one way there was a time when your man said he was a preacher you could turn him loose in your pulpit but nowadays you've almost got to check his credentials to find out whether he's changed ships or not. Amen. Amen. That's so, isn't it? One day you'll believe one thing, another day you'll believe something else. One day you'll be going one way, another day you'll be going one way else. You don't ever, you don't, he's like a football. You don't know which way he's going to bounce next. But I want folks to know I'm, I'm still where I started at. Amen. Amen. I'm still where I started. I believe in old time religion. I believe in the power of God. Amen. I believe that Jesus saves from the uttermost to the guttermost. Amen. I believe the power of God changes lives. Amen. I believe that. And so I just want to share some things tonight with you from the book of Jonah. Open your Bibles there briefly. Bobby, I believe I'm just a tad loud here. I don't want to verse 3 or three. I'm telling you. We're going to have to do something, pour water or something on it. Amen. <laughs> the book of Jonah, we're reading from chapter 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city. Notice, preachers, what he said, and cry against it. Amen. Had his work cut out right there, didn't he? Cry against it. Don't tell them how good they are. Let them have it. Amen. I mean, give them what for. Let them know what I'm thinking about. Them. Cry against them. For their wickedness is come up before me. Now, I'm going to say something right here. I believe America would make this city blush. Yeah. I really believe that. But Jonah rose up to flee under Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. I want to tell you something. If you're looking for a way to backslide, the devil will furnish you transportation. Amen. 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 If you want a way out, the devil said, I, I just happen to have some tickets in my pocket. Amen. I, I can really help you out. And you know backsliding don't just happen just like that. If you, if you backslide and get away from God, you've been thinking about it. Like the old man, this, listen, this lady was dying, you know, she was dying in bed. And, and I mean, she was in real bad shape. And they'd got this lady to come in and help this man with his wife and wait on her. And one day this old girl was in the bed. She wasn't hard as a sick. She didn't have two good eyes. She began to suspicious a little something. And she called this man, this woman in that was kind of waiting on her and helping her husband out. And she's called him into her bedside and said, Now I'm, I'm about to die. And said, Before I die, I'd just like to say, I think you all ought to get married. I, I think you'd make a good couple. And they spoke up and said, Well, we have been talking about it. <laughs> Amen. So the devil can, listen, he'll give you an escape. He'll give you a way out. He'll find you a way to go away from God. He'll never drive you closer to God. Amen. Notice now, to, and to go into Tarshish, till he paid the fire thereof and went down into it to go with them. To go with them. To go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Our Father, help us now. Help us, our Father, not to seek to perform. Help us not to seek to be competitive. Help us, our Father, just to preach. Thus saith the Word of God. Our Father, we thank you for Brother Fred. What a great message. Dear Lord, how you blessed him and how you... Put your hand upon him and how God's you fed our old souls. 
Thank you for him. I pray now, Lord, you'll bless thy servant as we try to share some thoughts with these people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. I want to just think a while on this thought. He went with them. He went with them. And then may I say there's another thought on my mind. And that's this. There's a crowd I'm not going with. Amen. This whole world. Listen, you're in Cleveland, Tennessee, whether you knew it or not. This is the only town in the country you could tie a sack full of corn shucks behind a rope and drag it down through the town. And say I'm starting a new religion and you'd have a congregation before you went a few blocks. Amen. Amen. This is the kind of town you're in. Religion's on every corner. And it's the only town in the country where you can get run over by a quartet bus. This is the town where they learn to take their hats off to find to tell you there's being spiritual, amen. But there's a crowd today I'm not going to go with. I'm just not going to do it. Amen. I started out back yonder years ago with the old-fashioned crowd, and I've made up my mind I'm going to stay with them. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a crowd I ain't going with. First of all, I'm not going to go with that crowd that don't believe this Bible. Amen. And I want to say to you right now, there's a crowd tonight that don't believe this Bible. Amen. Now I want to say you're not going to find them out yonder just all around. You're going to find them behind the pulpits of our country. Men that stand up and call themselves preachers that doesn't believe what God's Bible said. I believe this Bible. I've got the old King James Version, the 1611, and that's all I want. Amen. That's all I need. I've been using it all these years. And it's no place to switch now. I'm going to stay with this old book. Amen. It's the book that's preaching the day I got born again. It's the book, hallelujah, that brought me to a knowledge of my sins. It's the book, praise God, that me and my wife raised our family by. Amen. I ain't going to switch now. I'm not going to go with that crowd that don't believe this about. I hear them saying, well... It contradicts itself. But I never have got one of them to show me where he is. I never have got one of them to show me that verse of Scripture that contradicts it. It's amazing how many folks today that believe this Bible's out of date. I believe it's more up to date than next week's newspaper. Amen. It's up to date right now. Yes, sir. Oh, listen. I'm going to say something new. I hope you'll understand this. I believe when the preaching of this word, like, like Brother Fred Vaught preached tonight, comes back to our churches, do you know what? That, that's old-fashioned preaching we heard tonight. That's the kind of preaching I heard when I was a kid. And you say, well, it's not hardly. I remember a woman I had in my church for years down in Florida, and I thought she was bragging on me. She'd come out the door while I was shaking hands, and every Sunday morning, she'd say, you're uncouth. I thought she was bragging on me. Till I looked it up, she wasn't bragging on me. <laughs> the world thinks you're not with it if you believe this whole Bible. I believe it, so I must not be with it. Amen. I remember one day one fellow, one young man said, you're not groovy. Well, I said, I dig what you're saying. <laughs> I was coming through Birmingham, Alabama one time and there's four lanes on this one-way street. And I was coming through there and a traffic light stopped me and I thought I'd just pray a minute while the light's changing. And I'm just sitting there praying with my eyes open. And I, did you ever notice you can feel when somebody's staring at you? Yes. And I'm sitting there like this, and I felt somebody staring in that right ear. Yeah. And I just kept on praying, and I turned around, and there's a bunch of hippies in a car right by the side of me. I had my window down, and one of them done this. He said, way out. <laughs> and I looked back at him and said, groovy. <laughs> confessed 
to you. I don't fit into this world today. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are, I don't fit in with this world today. Amen. One man said one time to me, he said, you're a squire. I said, I'd like to see you build a house without one. Amen. Yeah, I'm a squire. I, I want to I I tell you, if you've got the least indication that you're a little modern, I want to say to you right now, I'm old-fashioned. Amen. Amen. It was an old-fashioned preacher preaching out this book the day I got born again. He believed this Bible. He believed the Word of God. He believed that it was God's Word. And I still believe that. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to go with that crowd that don't believe this Bible. Amen. Then I'm not going to go with this crowd that don't believe in the Genesis account of creation. Man asked me one time if I was a, that I believe in theistic evolution. I said, I've got one profound thing to say to you. And he said, what's that? I said, Did you know today it's a sad way our schools, the shape our schools are in right now. They'll let them teach in schools, I get this, the theory of evolution. But won't let them preach the factual account of the Genesis creation. And the thing that's getting on me today, here we sit on our blessed behinds and letting them get away with it. Amen? Say amen right there. You say, well now, Brother Blue, you just don't really believe that one day somebody made a man out of clay and then made him a mouth and some eyes and fingers and a hand and arms and a body and got down over him and breathed and he got up and walked and talked and he was a man. You don't believe that, do you, Blue? Yes, I believe that. I believe that. I believe, I believe that. Yeah. That don't strain me a bit. Yeah. Don't strain me. You know, I laugh at the evolutionists. They believe, now get this. <laughs> they believe that back out in the eons and the eons and the eons. <laughs> eons of time. One day, one day down at the beach, a little one-cell slimy glob floated up on the beach and laid there in the sun. <laughs> For eons and eons. And one day it quivered. And it grow to arm. So now what we have here is a one arm glob. <laughs> Trying to thumb its way to McDonald's. <laughs> Now you're laughing, but they believe that. I ain't going with them. I ain't going with them. Now you may be considering yourself a little educated and a little a little well, you know, you're a little polished, but I want to tell you something, friend. I ain't going with this crowd. I still believe in the beginning God made man in His own image. Well, you said that's a little out of date. I'm with that date then. I'm right there. I believe He formed him out of the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils and he became a living soul. Amen. I don't believe he was a glob. Amen. And I don't subscribe either to the cavemen theory. Amen. 
You know, booga, 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 booga. I don't. I don't. That's all. I don't believe that here comes a man out of a cave with a big club on his shoulder looking for a woman to knock in the head. I don't believe that. I believe God created man with an intelligence and I don't believe there's ever a day when he went around grunting. I believe he talked. Amen. Amen. When you sit down at our school, I don't care where you got it. That is a dirty lie from the devil. God made man in his image. That's what God's Bible said. How many of you have a Bible? Raise them up. Believe it. Hallelujah. Well, and you said there ain't nothing I can do about what they teach my kids in school. Let me tell you something that happened in Chattanooga while I live there. I took my, Josh, are you here, honey? Where are you at? Stand, right, stand up a little bit. That's, that's one of my daughters. Thank you, darling. I just wanted them to see how good looking you was. <laughs> took her down to a little old school, you know. And you know we're getting some mamby-pamby as pitiful. They run over like a bunch of dogs. And we just sit around, mealy mouth, and take it. I took down to school, and I went in to see them. First day, she's going to be there. And I said, now, we've got some standards that I own. And there's some things that I will not allow to be transgressed down here. And, and I'd heard a little bit about the school, and I said, now, we don't, we don't subscribe to dancing. Our children doesn't wear garments and become into Christians. They don't do it. And I said, I just want to tell you that I won't allow it down here either. I went back one afternoon to pick my daughter up. Had to go bring her to school. Had to come and get her. And I went back to get her. She came out crying. And I said, honey, what's the matter? And she said, daddy, they had what they call folk dance today. And I told the teacher I couldn't do that. And she got me by the arm and drug me across the floor and made me. She said, may pull me. I kick the cotton picking door open. I went in and a little bitty pasty faced principal come out of the door saying, Get control of yourself. I said, Get out of my way. <laughs> come on, brother. And I said, Where is that heifer that drugged my baby across that street? He said, I'm calling the law. I said, Get two carloads of them. She locked herself in the door crying. <laughs> It's time today, bless the Lord, to stand up for something. Quit being run over like a bunch of dogs. Do I hear an amen right now? Amen. We said, we won't do it no more. I said, you better not. I'm not going to that crowd that doesn't believe in the Genesis account. Then there's another crowd I ain't going with, and that's the crowd that don't believe in the virgin birth. I ain't going with them. You said you don't really believe she was a virgin, do you? Oh, yeah. How many of you believe that? One of the new perversions, not versions, perversions, said that she was a young woman. In Atlanta, Georgia, or any big city, probably in Cleveland, Tennessee, there's some young, quote, end quote, woman that may be a prostitute. This was not just a young woman. This was a young virgin that had found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And the Holy Ghost hovered over her and she conceived, am I right? And bare a son and his name was Jesus. Amen. 
Some of the infidels said that Jesus was a son or product of a blonde-headed German soldier. That's a dirty lie. He was not Joseph's son either. He was the only begotten son of God. Do you believe what I'm preaching? Well, you're just sitting there looking like a knot on a log. Get with me like Cairo Serp. I believe that he was the son of God. Made flesh that you preached about today and dwells among us and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. Amen. He was God's son. I ain't going with that crowd that don't believe that either. Well, you said our preacher has some doubts about that. Fire that turkey. Amen. Or one thing better yet, get out of there. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Man's not a preacher that doesn't believe in the virgin birth. If he don't believe in that, he ain't got nothing to preach. Amen. You ain't got nothing. He's out. Bless you, Lord. By the way, you ain't getting your offering back either. <laughs> I ain't going to go that crowd that doesn't believe in the blood atonement. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not the blood of bulls and goats. Not by works of righteousness. Not by the law. But my friend, today, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. I preach that. Preachers, that's so easy to preach. You can just get up and preach on the blood because that's the truth. That's the way. You don't have to, you don't have to, oh. You know, you say, <laughs> I remember a little story one time. I'm an evangelist and have been for years. A young man said God had called him to preach and another old man was trying to instruct him and he said, now son, I want you to go to good, some good Bible college and study. He said, why? Well, he said, you ought to know something. Ah, oh, he said, I don't need to study. I'm just going to be an evangelist. <laughs> but I'm going to say this about him. You can read this book and you'll soon, you'll soon bump into one fact. It's the blood or hell. Amen. Amen. You know, I never, my education is very limited, but I found that out right off to start with. Amen. I found out it was the blood that kept me out of hell. It's the blood that cleansed me from my sin and made me a new creature. I'm not going to go with that crowd that doesn't believe in the blood of Amen. The next of all, I'm not going to go with that crowd that doesn't believe in the bodily resurrection. Amen. I believe he came out with a body. You believe that? I mean a body. I don't believe he was a Casper ghost. Ooh. I don't believe that malarkey. I believe he came walking out with a body. I believe he said for everybody to hear, I'm he that was dead, but I'm alive. How long far? He said forevermore. You like that? You said, well, I'm about to run out of anything to preach. Preach this. This will work. I believe he came out. And I believe the men that was guarding the graveyard fell us dead men. Amen. You believe he had a bodily resurrection? Wasn't a spook? Wasn't a Casper ghost? He was Jesus Christ. That death had a nervous breakdown because it couldn't hold him. Amen. I imagine death said, all the time before now, we've had to hold men on the bed when I got to them. 
but he laid his life down before I even got there. Amen. Yeah. I want to tell you, <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Friend, let me tell you something right now. This bunch of liberals and modernists and infidels said, well, they know he wasn't really dead. It was just a drug he took and put him in a deep sleep. I believe he died. Yes, he did. I believe he was buried yeah. and I believe on the third day he rose again yeah. you say you're out of date yeah but I'm happy hallelujah yeah. Amen. I'm happy. I, I'm going to shake the tree here right now but I might as well do it now because I'm not trying to kill the camp or this jubilee and I, I said the other night, I'm the, I'm the man that said that we didn't have any personal access to grind. And the men understood, I hope, that we were talking about our own little pet peeves. But I, I've got something here I, I always have to deal with in this message. And I usually somebody will jump me after service. But I'm going to tell you something. I've been feeling bad physically today. Stay off of my case. I ain't going to put up your malarkey tonight. Here's another crowd I ain't going to go with And that crowd that doesn't believe that Christ died for everybody Well you said I'm kindly of the Calvin persuasion You stay away from me Now you hear me I'm not feeling good But I might knock a knot on your head You'd have to climb a ladder to scratch Amen I could put up with Herbert W. Armstrong better than I could you. I'd rather sleep in a bed full of Jehovah's Witnesses than I would you. I ain't got no use for you. Bless you, Lord. You're a false doctrine. Christ tasted death for everybody. Don't you tell me that he didn't die for my grandkids and left one of them going to... Don't you... I said... May the bird of paradise fly up your nose. I'm not a Calvinist. I don't believe that malarkey. It's not taught in the Bible. Don't you try to peddle me that junk. I ain't going with you. By the way, I might as well tell you, you ain't going to me either. Now you stay away from me. I'm not in a good mood tonight. Hallelujah. Well, you said our preacher believes that maybe that doctrine of irresistible grace. I don't believe that. Our preacher believes in limited atonement. I don't believe that either. Amen. I don't believe it. I don't. I say. 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 I don't believe that. Amen. I believe it's not His will that any perish, but that all come to repent. He commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Amen. The Bible said He tasted death for all men. I don't believe doctrine of Calvinism. Amen. I'm not going to go along with that crowd that doesn't believe, that believes in the Christ didn't die for everybody. And then I, I'm not going to go with that crowd that doesn't believe in missions. I'm not going to belong to a church that don't believe in missions. I'm going to tell you something else. I ain't going to give a dime to a church that don't believe in missions. And you oughtn't to either. A church that doesn't believe in missions and supports missions is not scriptural. Amen. And if you're going to a church that's given to, that believes in missions and you're not standing by it and giving to it so it can support missions, you're a cheapskate. Amen. <laughs> if you're... <laughs> If you're going to a church that believes in missions and you sit back and won't support it, you're a cheapskate. That's twice. There's, uh, there's these missionaries. 
stand up missionaries again. They need help. Well, you said our church, we don't never give much to missions. You're out of business already. You're out of business. You're you I say, I say, I say, I say, I say you're out of business. You're not doing nothing for God. That's a truth. Ronnie's got three little old kids. Two little old boys and the prettiest little old girl. Don't look like him for God's sake, no. <laughs> Trying to go to Scotland. Walking around. I noticed him there looking at preachers. Hoping they'd say, I wish you'd come over to our church and talk about your mission. Yeah. And got prayer cards printed trying to hand them out. Trying to raise money to go to Scotland. Old Gene Livingston League. And these other men trying to raise money. And you say, well, our church, we don't never say much about missions. You're out of business. Say amen right there. Amen. Next of all, I'm not going to go with that crowd. I like this. That doesn't believe he's coming again. I'm looking for him tonight. I'm, uh, have any of you read that book? He's, uh, let's see, The Rapture in 88. Have you read it? Uh, how many of you read that book? Quite a few of you. Well, be good if it had been a rapture in August of 88. <laughs> they got it set up September. Friend, listen, I believe he's coming again. Amen. I believe he's coming to get the church. Yeah. I believe we're going out of here in the twinkling of an eye. Amen. I believe the dead in Christ is going to raise first. Amen. And we that live and remain shall be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye and caught up. I, I didn't know I'd want to say this. I read it. I, I told some of the others. I said, let's don't say anything about it. I don't want to get a sympathetic party started. I don't want to get sympathetic started. I don't want that. I've been possibly diagnosed by three doctors. I've got to go to another one tomorrow. The first one said in Atlanta, Georgia the other day, I possibly had leukemia. He sent me to my family doctor and he said, I can understand why he said that. You may have. I went to another doctor this week right now. And I'm not, don't be sorry. I, I want you to look at my face. I got peace in my heart. I've got my blood's trying to come through my skin. Just no, no wound, just blood coming out. I went to another doctor yesterday, I believe it was, and he's sending me to another one tomorrow to determine whether they're going to put me in the hospital, whether I have leukemia or not. I want to tell you something right now. If I wasn't saved, I'd be down on my face and then shaving. Right Amen. Amen. I'd be on my shirt. I have, and I'm not trying to get you to feel sorry for me. To keep the blood in, they told me to wrap saran wrap around my legs. My legs are wrapped in saran wrap right now. Keep the blood in. But I want to tell you something. If the rapture comes tonight and you find two pieces of wrapped up saran wrap, that's where Blue was. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so if you need any saran wrap when I'm gone, you can have it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to go with that crowd that doesn't believe he's coming again. Amen. In hospitals and homes all across this country, folks are laying sick and suffering. Blind, main and body. But when Jesus comes to get his own. I saw somebody come in here tonight in a wheelchair. Brother, you say, you say, when you leave here, you'll leave the wheelchair behind Amen. I saw another fellow come in with some crutches. Can you imagine saran wrap, wheelchair, and crutches? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He is coming again. 
The graveyards are going to look like old plowed fields. God's yokes. Well, hallelujah. But let me ask you this question while they come to the instruments. While they come to the instruments. I don't feel good physically. But you know what will make me feel real good? See somebody saved tonight. Amen. If you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus... If you've never been born again, if you've not been washed in the blood, tonight would be a good night to get born again. Amen. Amen. People all around here that will take the Word of God and show you how to get saved. Tonight I want them to play softly, if they would please. Softly, very softly. Heads bowed and eyes closed. I want to see the hands of those tonight that know beyond a shadow of a doubt you're saved. You know you're saved, you know you're saved, you know you're saved, raise up your hand. You know you're saved, raise up your hand. All over the tent, take them down, take them down. Now I want to see the hands of those tonight that said, Brother Blue, if I were to die, I'd go to hell. I'm not right, I'm not saved. I don't want to die like this. I'm not ready, I'm not right with God. Would you raise your hand and say, pray for me? Would you slip up your hand and say, I'm not saved. I need to get saved, but I'm not. Would you slip up your hand and say, I'd like you to pray for me. Raise up your hand right quick. Hurry. Anywhere in the house. Anywhere in the tent. I want to see if there's somebody here tonight that said, Preacher, I'm not living right. I used to live for God. I used to live close to Jesus. But I'm not living like I ought to live. I wonder, would you raise up your hand and say, pray for me. Raise up your hand and say, I need prayer. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, young man. Thank you, son. Thank you. Wonder for somebody else right quick. Now tonight, I want you to do this. You two men that raise your hand, I'd like you to get right with God tonight. Son, I'd like to see you get right with God. He's coming back right away. It won't be long now. Father, I pray for these that raise their hands. I pray they'll come tonight. Help them to walk these aisles and get out of this old shavings and bow their knees and say, Lord, I want to come home in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together, please. And while we stand and while we sing, you that raise your hand, will you come sing it? Walk and wash away sing it for my sins, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. moment right now I want you to pray for those two young men that raised their hands. I'm not going to have any singing. I just want you to pray. Pray that God will speak to their hearts. They raise their hands. Young men, I, I'd say in 20s or below, but I want you to pray for them. Pray God will speak to their hearts. Father, speak to them right now. Help them on this next verse to come for Christ's sake. Amen. Sing another verse right now. We wait for you. This is all my hope and peace. Come on right now. Nothing but the blood the bag of the Jesus. Plead with you to come. This is all my righteousness. Come on. Nothing Make but that the blood of Jesus. Sing it, folks. Oh, precious is the blood that makes me white. But the blood of Jesus. 